breath because I was running around thinking this is something that I have done before. The link to this is up above. Hi, Vicki. Welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. Okay, so this is a unique French bee. It's B because I have a bee stencil that I'm going to be using. I'm not going to be using all of it. I'm just going to use the B in the middle. And I have a piece of wood here that is a two by six, which is actually one and a half by, hey, thanks for the hearts. It's actually one and a half uh, by five and a half. One and a half thick by five and a half. And I didn't even measure how long it is. It's just long enough. <laughs> I cut it to eight and a half inches <laughs> a long time ago. I just grabbed a, this board. Sometimes I keep different boards to kind of um, just for different signs and stuff like that and craft projects is something quick. Okay, so I started painting this. I did stop. Hey, <laughs> nice to see you, Vicki. So glad you could join me. Now I start painting it with just your Waverly uh, chalk paint in plaster. I did want to cover the whole top surface. I'm a, I'm kind of, this is my new thing lately. I know last week I made wood tags out of plywood and I only painted the top because I wanted to see that plywood edge, which is really strange. I know plywood's not really pretty to a lot of people, but I did have some good, good looking plywood, first of all. So some of the plywood could get kind of wonky. <laughs> So I don't like that, but it was just really pretty all those layers underneath and I really wanted to see that So I'm going to kind of do the same with this plus I'll just save a little bit of time And I am painting this very quickly just to get some color on it and in fact I am going to use I had started painting this and while I was waiting for you guys to come on and gathering up some stuff I had a wet paper towel that I wrapped my my paintbrush in because I knew I didn't want to dry out while I was uh, waiting for time. And so that's a quick tip for you. If you're, um, you know, just finishing some things up, just wrap it in a damp paper towel and it will be ready to go when you're ready. Now I'm just running over this with that same towel. <laughs> And just to kind of smooth out the lines and everything, this is this is kind of a neat, fast way to do it. If you're just making some signs or doing some kind of a craft, craft project like that, that's kind of a neat way to kind of get it to dry up. If you wipe your hands across it, you will get paint, of course. But, okay, so I'm going to let this dry for a minute, and I'm going to tell you what it is that I'm going to do. And, and uh, I'm going to also help it dry a little bit. Great tip, yeah. Yeah, if you're just making, you know, porch signs or gifts or something like that, just, you know, kind of take a damp paper towel and wipe over it. You're just wanting that little bit of color on there. You're not needing something, you know, massively. You're not, I wouldn't do it if I'm painting, you know, like I always say, grandma's dresser. <laughs> if I'm painting a beautiful piece of furniture, I'm going to do it proper. <laughs> but this is just a piece of wood. It's just going to be a sign that, um, I'm not even, I probably will hang it here in the craft room. By the way, I've been working a lot on my craft room and I've been changing things around and I am going to be sharing not only the craft room, but my She Shed workshop with you guys very soon. In fact, the She Shed workshop, I'm going to be doing Friday. Um, Friday uh, Thursday at this time, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek and then Oh, Linda, it's going to be fun. And on Friday at this time, I'm actually going to give you a little tour of my She Shed workshop. It's not a pretty, when you think of She Sheds, at least for me, I always think of those cute, cute, totally decorated, so cute. Mine's not that. It's actually a work shed. It's got work tools in it. Okay, like I said, this was five and a half inches. So I want to find my center part, a point, which is two and three quarters. Now, I'm terrible at math, but one thing I can do is measurements. I'm pretty good at just knowing the, my measurements. I think it's because of all the woodworking I've done. Um, okay, and I want to grab a pencil, and I'm going to put just the lightest little line on here. I want to find my center point. I'm sitting low here and I'm not used to this. I usually craft standing up and I sit down for today. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, I know. I'm, re I'm real excited to show you guys. Uh, right now, it's actually cleaned out. Oh, talking about problems, uh, not really problems, but just so many bugs and spiders and stuff. I had to clean up. Ooh, it was awful. Um, thank goodness Mike has a nice big blower. So we took it in there and blew it out. <laughs> 
and just the leaves and the sawdust over winter, you know, I would, I would snip, sneak out there every once in a while if I just needed to cut a little piece of board or something. I don't do much in there in the winter, but I would sneak out and just cut a little piece of board. And, uh, oh, I almost tore that too short, but that's okay. Okay, I want to go, I want a piece of tape going all the way across, and boy, does it look like that's crooked. Huh. Did I measure wrong? Two and a half? Nope, it's just my eyes. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover this whole thing with tape. <laughs> Okay, the whole thing. This will kind of, and I'm doing this because this will help you a little bit. Hi, Lori, welcome. This will kind of help you understand what it is I'm doing. Okay, I've got this one here. I didn't quite get it completely. I need to be tearing off longer pieces, guys. And I want, I've got my center point. I know where my center is. So I'm going to go all the way across, not really overlapping, just laying it kind of close. I cover the whole thing, the whole surface. And like I said, I had made this sign, and the link is up above. Hello, Kirby. Uh, the link is uh, apparently I did not find my. I need to stand up for a minute and look at this. Apparently, I did not find my center spot. There it is. I knew things looked wonky. Okay, let's start over. Not really start over, but let's start this right. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, sometimes I need to stand up and look at my projects rather than sitting down. I think I got a little bit more centered now. This was not working out. Okay, there we go. Now, two more pieces. Okay, well, uh, oh, I'm glad you're watching. Snakes and spiders are scary. Yeah, we, um, so far I've never had a snake in my workshop that I'm aware of. We do have a lot of snakes here in Arizona. And uh, we're in the mountains of Arizona, but we still get a lot of snakes. Um, but I have had mice get in there. And I've really got it sealed up really, really well. When we first built it, we really did a good job because really sealed up very, very well. And each year I go in there when I clean it out and make sure that everything's sealed up, that I don't have any open areas or anything. So it's really hard for very much to get in there. So I don't think I've had a snake. Okay, now I've got completely covered. Now what I wanna do is I am going to take off this one. Okay, and then that was one just on one side of the, the center mark, okay? I wanted that one off. I want this one off, every other one then, and this one off. Okay, now I'm gonna paint these that's left. Okay, and I am going to paint them. Now here's another little tip for you. I give, try to give you guys lots and lots of tips. I had a, a grass snake that popped up when I was mowing and scared to death. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, to be honest, we did see a snake yesterday. It was actually behind the shed, kind of, uh, kind of a little bit away from it, uh, but it was just a, a, a garter snake, I think they call it. So, you know, it went on its way, Yuck. but I'm not a snake fan at all. I have way more paint. Okay, so my tip, if you've got, I've got, this is some plaster, it's kind of a creamy white, and I wanted some contrast on here, but I don't want a lot, but I didn't have any kind of a brown, and I wanted a brown, and I will show you next week, I'm going to finish this, the edges, I've got an idea, that I'm gonna, and I'm going to use this frame, so you're going to see, or this sign. You're going to see this pine sign next week too. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with the edges. But this, so I wanted a brown because of the edges that's coming up next week. So I'm just using a little bit of craft paint, your acrylic paint, and I'm going to dab a little dot in there because this is too brown. I don't want it this brown. And I am just going to take the handle of a paintbrush and stir that up a little bit, kind of get a color that I like better, which is, I look at Maddie, <laughs> but that's okay, that's okay. It's kind of the color I wanted. I'm kind of going for the color of burlap. I'll give you a little hint, okay? Okay, and that's stirred up good enough. Now, what I'm gonna do is take my paintbrush, a paintbrush, and I'm gonna paint my stripes. And again, I'm just gonna do it kind of quickly, nothing fancy, and I kind of like that, 
I've got a few streaks in there. Okay, it didn't kind of kind of blend my paint, but that's okay. Kind of like that actually. I used to years ago make a lot of home furniture and I sold it along the central coast of California. And I was picky about my paint colors. And this was way before chalk paint was ever out. Um, and I used to um, take my paint and I'd want a certain color, but I couldn't really find it. You know, I, I, I would like this, this certain color. So I got to where I would mix my paints and I would use a little bit of acrylic paint in at that time, just latex paint. I would just use a little bit of craft acrylic and mix it up the way I wanted it. And sometimes I would come up with a color that I loved. And so I would take it over to the Ace Hardware and have them mix up, a, you know, a gallon of that paint um, in that color. And they would do that for me. So again, if you, if you happen on a color that you really kind of like, um, you know, put it on a, I used to even put it on a little piece of um, cardstock, recipe cards, what I'm trying to think of, a little bitty recipe card. And I would take it over to them. And they would um, they would mix it up for me. Okay, so now I've got stripes. Okay, what I should have done before I taken those off, just to hurry things along, I should have wiped that down again with my wet paper towel, just be, for speed. But I didn't, so I apologize for that. This may take just a little bit longer than I intended. Because I do need this to be a little bit dry before I keep going. And I don't want to confuse you on this. This is really, really a unique, it makes a really neat sign. And again, if you um, want to see the farmhouse sign, it just says farmhouse. It's long and skinny. Again, I, I make a lot of projects. Okay, I, I probably make a project... Probably four to five, maybe. And right now, I'm even making more than that because I'm going live every day. So I make projects for the website. And then I make projects just to share with you guys here. Okay, it's going to be dry enough. Perfect. Ooh, very dry. Very nice. Okay, now, here's what I'm going to do. And I have to think through this just a little bit. Okay. I am going to take my some more of this and I am now going to cover the the, the paint that I just covered okay. and that's why I wanted to kind of lay these out the side I'm using paint this is three quarter of an inch paint so the width of that I wanted to make sure that I've got those if that made sense because this here paint I'll just cover it all up again okay Oops, I'm a little off up there. There we go. And then this one. Okay, so I'm going to cover that up. And then it's time for stenciling. Okay. So I am, oh, <laughs> got pencils, got extra paint, tape. Okay. So I'm going to center my B. I'm going to put it on upside down to me so it's right side to you. And I'm going to center this B on there. Okay, part of the B, there's some tape right here. There's that tape. So that part of the B is not going to be done. This right here will be done. So, and I, I'm close enough. I've got the head of the B here. I can see on the tape the tail, tail of the B there. And I am going to take my stencil and I am going to dab dab paint off a little bit so that you've got just a very little bit. And I'm only worried about where I see white for the B. Okay, so I'm going to stencil where I see white on this B. Oops, that's not where I see white. Oh, this can be a little bit easier than the farmhouse. I just realized because the B doesn't stretch all the way across this thing. Easy. Okay, so I've got that part of the B stenciled there. Now I'm going to come over here and stencil here because it's it's got a little bit part of its wing and part of its one of its legs I guess is what that is. Okay, I'm going to pick that up. Okay, so I got that. 
you can see where I went crazy over there. Now I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to pull this one off. This one here wasn't really needed too much anyway. Okay, I'm going to dry this a little bit. Let me show you that up close so you can see what kind of effect that you're getting. See how that's looking? Okay, there it is. Okay. Then I'm going to dry it very, very quickly. This here dries this so quick. Good morning, Nicole. Welcome. Welcome. Has anyone ever done a technique like this? It's, it's a little more complicated in your head than it is once you start actually doing it. Uh, once you start doing it and getting the hang of it, I have done this not only on the farmhouse sign, which I'll share if I can ever find. Again, I do a lot of projects and I donate them. So I may have donated that sign. I'm not sure. Couldn't find it this morning. Okay. Got my stencil dry. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use new because some of that is all got paint in various places and I just don't want to mess anything up with it. So I'm going to start with some new tape. I also did this technique on the top of a trunk that's in our bedroom where I did overlays, but on it, I really didn't put any image or word or anything, but I used Vaseline and so some places where it, it aged and I, I rubbed it back and everything um, so that different layers show different things like there'd be a part of this like this it's almost like gold to me it should be burlap color but where some of that would be kind of nicked away and you could see the white underneath uh, and vice versa I had it where I had this the opposite colors black and white actually and I'll share a picture of that too or a link with that too Although, to be honest, I did it so many years ago. I'm kind of tired of it, and I would kind of been meaning to recover the top. But at the time, you know, it's really neat. Okay, I'm only going to cover these two because that's all, the, all that needs to be covered. I don't need one over here because the bee doesn't extend that far. Okay, I'm going to place the bee. Now, here's a tip for you. When I did do that, I can see through this here so I can see where that wing is. Another tip would be to leave a little marker for yourself wherever so you know that you're going to place it right back. But this tape, let me show you this. Let's see if you can see that. Right here where my finger is, you can see that gold underneath there of that wing. So I'm going to use that wing to cover it, to place this so that I get it kind of in the right spot. Let me see if I can get that right. And I'm just, I'm not using spray or anything like that. I really do wish I had done that differently, but I didn't. But that's okay. 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 i tell you what I'm going to do. Take a, a pencil or a marker. And mark that a little bit more so I can see it. Oh, crayon. Well, this will work. Just kind of line that up. If, in fact, you forgot to do that, do this little bit, and this will help you kind of place it. Should have practiced this before I got started today, but I didn't. I just kind of wing these, so we just jump in and do them. Okay, I think I got it right in there. Okay, and I do know it should be right about there. We're going to be close enough, okay? Okay, and then I am going to stencil with my white. Close the lid on it, didn't I? Let's see here. And again, I'm dipping white on there. I'm going to rub it off over here. And hopefully I haven't, I did move that a little bit. Sorry, guys. Okay, I think I got that close enough. Okay, and again, I'm only going, to, I'm not going to do where the tape is, because why? Just do where you can see the gold through there. Just go right up to the tape. And then I'm going to come over here and finish off this wing that's over here on this side. Now, let's see if I got it close. 
Okay, guys, you ready? <laughs> oh, I did it. Yay, look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay, look at the bee. Isn't that cool? Let me get it up close for you. But see how that turned out? I love that. And now when I did the farmhouse, I did it with lettering. So I, you do it the same way. I wrote farmhouse on my, uh, you know, I had my stencil with my farmhouse and I just, you know, went back and forth with the colors and laid it out so that it came out like that. So I might make sure, obsessed. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. I thought you might like that one. So if you get a chance, go to the link that's up above and it will show you the farmhouse sign that I made because it's really, really cool. But I really do love this little bee. He turned out so neat. So thank you guys. Linda, oh my God, it's so neat. <laughs> Isn't it really cool? Uh, I really like the way that turned out. I might want that white just a little bit darker on there, but I'm thinking that that yeah, it, it's it's super, super easy, but you got to kind of get out of your head and just go with it a little bit. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, thank you, Vicki, very much. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of my She Shed workshop. Nicole has seen it live, I do know, and I kind of cleaned it out. I'm kind of making it a little bit nicer. It is a workshop, so it does have a lot of power tools in there and everything, but it is still kind of a little bit cute. I have to practice this, <laughs> watching this now. <laughs> yeah, go back, rewatch it. It's very, very easy. The biggest thing for me is getting out of my own head when I'm doing it. It's the first time I've done a lot. No, I take that back. I did do a, one of these live before. So that's probably in the post there somewhere. Um, so, but first time I've ever done it with a bee. So I really do love this. Now, next week, I'm going to be grabbing this and I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish off the edges of these. Even though I kind of like it raw wood, I'm in this raw wood thing. So don't know what that's about. But anyway, super, super easy, super, super fun. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, tomorrow I'll be out at the workshop. We're going to do an easy workshop project. And then Friday, I'll give you'll get a sneak peek of it. But Friday, I'll give you a tour of the workshop. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs>